Hi there, Easter Church School, and welcome to part three of our story of Joseph. Now, I don't know what you kind of feel about the story of Joseph um, so far. For me, it's kind of felt a bit like uh, being on a big roller coaster ride. Some of you would have been on a roller coaster. Some of you maybe have just seen them, uh, maybe on TV or at an amusement park. And of course, a roller coaster, just like this one, uh, has massive highs at the top, and then it swoops down uh, and goes really low down um, as well. And we've seen that with Joseph, haven't we? Right at the beginning of the story, Joseph is given this wonderful uh, coat of many colours. That's the, that's the high of Joseph's life. It's wonderful. It's amazing. But then we saw his brothers get jealous and chuck him in a pit. Well, you can't get much lower than that, can you? And then the brothers, of course, bring him out of the pit. And Joseph must have thought, brilliant, they've changed their minds. All is going to be OK. But then they sell him as a slave to Egypt. And it's a low once again. Once he gets to Egypt, he gets a job in a very important person's house. And he gets to live there and enjoy all the good things uh, that that job entails. But then he ends up in prison, a high and then a low. And then from the low of being in prison, he is then able to move from there and end up working with the Pharaoh of Egypt and being in charge of all the food in the land. There have been highs and there have been lows. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of give you the, the final part of the story of Joseph. And then we're going to try and think, well, what does this story mean for us? We want to find out, first of all, what happened with Joseph and his brothers. But as we heard last week, there was this big uh, famine in the land. No one had any food. Uh, but in Egypt, food had been stored up because of Joseph's wisdom and because he understood Pharaoh's dream. And so Jacob, remember Jacob, Joseph's father, he sent Joseph's brothers down to Egypt to buy food. And when they get down there, they actually, they meet, they see Joseph, but they don't recognize him. He's been there for years now. He's dressed like an Egyptian, possibly he's picked up a bit of the accent. They don't realize who it is. But he allows them to buy some food. But he says to them, I want you to go and bring back your youngest brother, Benjamin. Because Joseph and Benjamin were really, really close. Joseph loved Benjamin and wanted to see him again. But Jacob hadn't let him travel down with the other brothers to Egypt. So Joseph said, make sure you bring back Benjamin next time you come. And so they, were, they paid their money and they got their grain to bring back to Jacob. But on the way home, they found something really weird. When they checked their sacks that had all the food in, they discovered that all the silver they'd used to pay for it had been returned to them. Now, they're a little bit worried about this because they thought, what on earth is going on? What, what, I'm sure we paid for all this food, but all their money was back. And when they told Jacob about it, Jacob was worried too. He thought, no, we've got to go back. We've got to go back to Egypt. And they said, we've got to bring Benjamin back with us. Now, Jacob really didn't want that to happen. He didn't want to lose Benjamin. But in the end, he agreed it was the only way for them to get more food. And so Jacob let Benjamin go with the other brothers and they returned once again to Egypt. And Joseph, when he saw Benjamin, he was really, really happy. But still, no one knew that the person they were speaking to was Joseph, their brother. And so, again, they paid for the food as before. And they set off on their journey back to their family, back to Jacob. But what they didn't realize is that Joseph had been a little bit sneaky. Because he'd asked one of his men to put a silver cup in Benjamin's sack. So as they were kind of leaving, as they were traveling back, suddenly all the brothers were called back and said, you've got to come back to Egypt. And they all came back and they stood before Joseph. And Joseph said, someone has stolen my silver cup. And all the brothers were like, no, it wasn't us. We would never do such a thing. You can search our sacks if you want. So they did. And where was the silver cup found? It was found in Benjamin's sack. And Joseph said, this, this young man, this Benjamin, he's going to have now to stay with me. You're all free to go, but he will have to stay. And uh, Judah, one of the brothers, said to Joseph, no, 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 we can't go back without Benjamin. If you want to take someone else, 
Uh, you know, take, take me, take me instead. And at that point, Joseph couldn't control himself anymore. And he reveals himself to his brother and said, look, it's me. It's Joseph. I'm alive. And crying, he hugged them and he drew them close together. Now, we may kind of think well, that's a bit of a weird thing for Joseph to do. Why did he do that? It's not really actually clear. What I think Joseph was doing was to see whether actually his brothers had changed, to see whether his brothers actually really cared about Benjamin and whether they would give themselves for Benjamin, whether they'd be willing to stay to make sure that Benjamin wasn't left behind in Egypt, just to see actually if his brother's attitude had changed. Now, the kind of the, the ending of the story is that eventually Jacob uh, and all of Joseph's brothers, they go and they live in Egypt. So that's the place where all the food is. And they go and they have their own particular part of the land that is given to them where they're able to settle and uh, be with Joseph. So it is very much actually a, a happy ending. But right at the end of this first book of the Bible, this book of Genesis, which you've now finished, in its last chapter, Joseph says this to his brothers. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And what we said about that roller coaster right at the beginning. Joseph was able to look back on his life and see that even in the bad times, even when things were really, really tough for him, he believed that God was there with him and that God had actually used those bad experiences, those tough times to do something amazing. And you know, Christians believe that God still does that today. Because you know, our lives can be a bit like a roller coaster sometimes, can't they? There are times when we are really happy and everything seems great and everything's going well. But then there are times as well in our lives when things are really tough and perhaps we're quite sad and perhaps we are struggling. And certainly I'd imagine over the last year and a half, maybe a lot of us have felt like that. But I want each one of us here in this assembly to understand that even during the bad times, God can bring good out of our suffering. God can bring good out of our sadness. God can turn every situation around. And we may sometimes be on the bottom of the roller coaster, but hopefully very, very soon we may be back up the top again. And God will bring us out of that tough situation. And we will know that actually he was with us every step of the way. And that is the end of the book of Genesis. And you'll have to wait, uh, at least to those of you who are in uh, years one to five anyway, to find out what happens next in September as we move on into Exodus. Those of you who are in year six, hopefully you'll be able to look at it and learn it maybe in your secondary schools uh, a bit later on um, as well. But as we finish this assembly, I just want to say this prayer. And uh, if you want to join in with this prayer with me, then you can say Amen uh, out loud or in your head at the end. Or, or if not, just, just listen along and reflect on these words. Dear God, we thank you that you're with us in good times and bad. We thank you that you can turn any situation around and use it for good. Help us to trust you when we are going through tough times. And we pray that we will know your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much, Easter Church School. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, summer break and I'll see most of you back here in September.